Change, change, O oh form of man. Free the prince forever damned. Free the might from fleshy mire. Boil the blood and heart for fire. Gone, god form of man. Rise the demon. Etrigan. Born in the depths of hell, Etrigan was summoned by the wizard Merlin on Earth in the lost age of Camelot. The demon was bound to a knight of the realm, Jason Blood. The two beings became one, destined, or perhaps cursed, into sharing a body for all eternity. They had an effect on one another. The demon's evil nature gradually became more amoral, although Etrigan never abandoned his more violent and unpredictable instincts. Jason Blood was changed too, also becoming more amoral and distant from the world around him, compared to his formerly noble self. The two survived centuries like this, although they largely kept out of the public eye. This was because Jason was afraid of Etrigan's enormous power, which he has no control over when it is released. On numerous occasions, though Etrigan has been useful, the demon will happily torture and kill innocent people, as he delights in their suffering. As a result, Jason is generally very reluctant to unleash Etrigan onto the world, and often only does so when he is absolutely forced to. Jason was first found operating in the modern age out of Gotham City as a demonologist, finding himself in a battle against his old enemy, Morgan Le Fay. Since then, Etrigan and Jason gradually became more involved in the affairs of superheroes and mystics, often acting as an ally, but sometimes, when the demon is out of control, Etrigan is proven to be a deadly enemy. The demon is strong and durable enough that he can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Superman or Wonder Woman. His demonic nature generally gives him a great deal of other powers, including enhanced senses, super speed, telepathy, and the ability to create various projectiles, often blasting them out of his mouth in a high volume. Etrigan enjoys the feeling of pain and delights in battle making him a reckless combatant often willing to dive in and attack without the fear of injury. As a result, this demon is a deadly foe in combat. Thanks to the demon's incredible ability to cause fear in others, Etrigan was once briefly chosen to wield the Yellow Power Ring. The demon is skilled in magic as well, although no expert at sorcery. Mystics such as Jason's longtime enemy, Morgan Le Fay, and the demon's father, Belial, have far greater skills at magic when compared to Etrigan. As a result, the demon has often been put under the control of various villains, especially by these superior magicians, which is why Etrigan can be an enemy as often as he is a friend. Luckily, the demon's powers are not unlimited. As a demon, Etrigan also possesses two reliable weaknesses, two holy energy and iron, both of which are strong counters to the demon's phenomenal powers. Fire suppressants and certain sounds are also sometimes effective against Etrigan, Jason, meanwhile, is largely a normal human, with only hints of his demonic half's abilities. He does have a great deal of experience with hand-to-hand -hand combat, magic, and other occult matters. When Jason has been convinced to work with other superheroes, both he and the demon have proven to be strong allies, although team members have to be wary of the demon's unpredictable nature. They have served on teams like Justice League Dark, and a team that operated during the Dark Ages known as the Demon Knights. Through these dealings and many others, Etrigan and Jason have made reliable contacts with many members of the mystical community, including, but not limited to, the likes of Madame Xanadu, Zatanna, Constantine, and the Swamp Thing. Jason also tends to know other immortals like Vandal Savage, due to the sheer amount of time they have all been on Earth together. Though volatile, the power of this demon is undeniable. And while Jason Blood must carry this burden with him, in times of danger, in moments of emergency, when things get to the point of a crisis, the power of a demon strong enough to take on the entire Justice League is one hell of a last resort. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is Understanding Etrigan. Well, this is a fun one. I love Etrigan. He's a solid part of DC canon and an excellent character overall. 
It's hard to find fault with a character entirely created by Jack Kirby, and why would I want to seek faults in such a character to begin with? To me, he's an excellent wild card in the back pockets of writers over at DC, and has been that way for many years. Playable in almost any condition, and easily written as a friend or foe as needed. So he can be summoned by a more powerful mystic, be recruited as Jason Blood, or be forcibly involved in certain events. There was a particularly great moment like this in Blackest Night, as one of those times when Jason was forced to bring Etrigan out after Deadman possessed the man and recited Etrigan's poem himself. That's really only the tip of the iceberg of awesome Etrigan moments that exist throughout DC's history. His classic appearances are good, in particular Jack Kirby's initial comics The Demon are always worth reading, there's a miniseries from 1987 that's fun, and Action Comics 636 to 641 was a formative story in securing the demon as part of DC canon. He also had a great appearance in Alan Moore's Swamp Thing run that cemented his whole notion of this character generally speaking in rhyme. That's pretty important. And I actually enjoyed him in Justice League Dark, in both the New 52 comics and the animated film. If you kind of understand Justice League Dark for what it is. Etrigan hasn't appeared much in Rebirth, as far as I can tell, but there is a new series about the character coming out this November. Uh, we'll see how it is. <laughs> in general, stories with this character are quite fun, but nothing's really required when it comes to Etrigan. Instead, I prefer just engaging in DC Comics and enjoying the surprise of when he shows up. That's usually when the demon's at his best, when he just shows up out of nowhere, has a few good moments, and overwhelms somebody with his sheer power. He's kind of at his best when he's this wild card in the world of DC, and that happens in a huge range of stories. From big name modern stuff like Multiversity or Injustice Year 3, to wildly fun content like Brave and the Bold, or even a brief appearance in Neil Gaiman's The Sandman. So there's nothing really essential when it comes to Etrigan beyond just knowing the basics behind him and the fact that he can pretty much show up at any given moment. And when he does show up, it's always just so awesome and a real treat for any DC fan. Thanks for watching this video. This was a prioritized request by Sam and Daniels. If you want your request guaranteed to be made early on and not, you know, within a year, check our Patreon page to see how you can get involved. But we do take requests from everyone, so let me know if there's any characters you would like to learn more about in the comment section below. Finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.